Welcome to the Zia Wool Studio Buzz Podcast, episode 20. Yay! This is a podcast about knitting, spinning, and all the beautiful things you can make with um, yarn and fiber, which can knit, crochet, and whatnot. My name is Doc, and while I usually come to you from Albuquerque in New Mexico, where I live, for a change, this is the very first time that I am recording in Germany. We are on a vacation here, and I'm staying with my beautiful mom, who, whom I have convinced to come with me on the podcast. So I thank her for that. Danke, Mama, dass du dich wieder bereit erklärt hast, wieder mit mir im Podcast zu sein. So, um, I was saying that um, she should be, um, the, I was saying that she can start and by showing what her makings in the past weeks. And um, also, she is working usually for most most of the time uh, for a good cause. So we'll, she will talk a little bit about that. And then I will translate for you guys because she doesn't speak English. Also Mama, nein, ich habe gesagt, du äh, zeigst, was du in den letzten Wochen so gemacht hast und sagst was darüber, wofür du arbeitest und also für den guten Zweck, wofür du die Socken strickst und zeigst auch die anderen. Soll ich deine Tasche mal halten? Hallo, schönen guten Tag, sagt euch Oma Gerda aus Deutschland, aus Karl am Main. Ja. Dagmar ist ja jetzt hier zu Besuch, aber jetzt möchte ich euch so meine Werke zeigen. Ich arbeite für einen guten Zweck, Socken stricken und zwar für Pro Inderplast. Äh, eine Freundin hat mir das dargelegt und es macht mir viel Spaß und ja. Da gehen deutsche Ärzte in die dritte Welt und tun dort äh, Kranke operieren, was nötig ist und wo kein Geld dort da ist dafür. Also, das ist ein Projekt von mir. Ein bisschen auch mit Resteverwertung. Das ist dann ein Herrensocken. Mensachs. Obviously. Ich denke, ich mache immer so alle Größen durch. Dann ich erzähle mal gerade, was ihr, wie ihr das da macht. Also, Mom is, is they're knitting the socks for a good cause for a, an organization which um, helps to finance medical treatment for third world countries. And they usually sell the socks at um, a craft shows kind of when it gets closer to Christmas. And this is the, really the time where they, they just produce the, a lot of socks as much as they can to have those out at the, the craft shows, I think in December, end of November. So, and she tries to make an array of sizes and for men and women, and a lot of people know them already. She's doing that with a, a friend or a group of women actually is doing it with a friend. And um, they, so a lot of people know them already and come to the craft show uh, and, and look for them to stock up on hand knitted socks. And, uh, Fertig für yeah. dieses Mal. Uh, and that's where I get a lot of my German leftovers from. They always collect them for me, which is really nice. Ich treffe mich so alle vier Wochen. Yeah. So they sell the socks really for a steal. I say if I was here, I probably wouldn't knit socks, <laughs> buy them from them. Was nehmt ihr nochmal wie viel so für ein paar Socken? 12 und 15. 12 für Damen und yeah. 15 für Herren. Uh -huh. So what they take is they take 12 euros for women's socks and 15 euros for 
men's socks, right? That's a steal. I mean, so, and all everything they, after paying for the yarn, everything um, they make on the sock goes to the this organization. Oh yeah, that's the, the flyer. Yeah, it's really amazing what they do. Yeah. Danke, Mama. Ja, toll, toll. So, wie lange hast du da, da dran jetzt gearbeitet? Vier Wochen, ne? Ja, ja, yeah. yeah. ungefähr. So, this is what she made in about the last four weeks. Bist du schon so? Ja. Ja. Also, ihr Lieben, dann habt eine schöne Zeit. Vielleicht sehen wir uns einmal wieder. Oma says goodbye until Bye. next time. Danke, Mama. Tschüss. So that was really nice. It's amazing how much, how many socks she makes. And she's already on another pair. And uh, this afternoon, actually, we're going to go see her friend and we're going to exchange socks for more uh, yarns to produce the, the next load of socks. So that's really amazing. So it's hot in Germany and I, yeah, but I, well, I'd be out more to eat ice cream and whatnot. I've been a little bit handicapped because um, I went one day, I went to Frankfurt for just to spend the afternoon um, in town with uh, my daughter. And on the way back, I guess I was so tired that um, I wasn't lifting my feet properly and I was walking quite fast and I kicked a concrete ledge and it I was walking so fast that it 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 kicked I I, I essentially kicked aside my shoe my flip-flop and hit that concrete ledge with my foot with the ball of my foot in front be, be, behind my big toe and that literally cut open I spare you the details so I need I did not need stitches and it's healing quite well but it's very bruised and uh, yeah so I haven't been able to walk because I I just wanted to take all kinds of pressure off that spot and I'm, I'm only hobbling on my heel and you know what that means for us knitters we're lucky because we have such a hobby that where we won't mind when we're stuck to one spot. And um, so I've been knitting a lot, which has been really um, nice and very enjoyable. And I never mind knitting in the heat. It's been hot since we got here and but just a few thunderstorms in between. And um, yeah, I it's, it's just nice. I think you know how it is when you're staying with your mom and you, you get spoiled and she cooks you all the favorite foods and whatnot. It's really nice. <clears throat> so, um, I want to, but let me start with the first thing I actually finished when I got to uh, Germany, which was something that I made for my daughter because we had talked about this before, you know how right now you find in the stores crocheted tops. I think they're called actually really festival tops. And um, so she said, oh, can't you, can't you make me a, a top now? And so uh, I had been organizing and cleaning up um, mom's a stash of yarn and um, she... Of course, there was something that I found there that was suitable for a top, and I so I made, I made that for um, my daughter, and it um, involved a few um, episodes of frogging, just really to make it fit her bust. But um, it turned out in the end really nice, and I will have a photo shoot with her eventually in this and show you the photos. I'm not sure if we can do it today. It's kind of a little bit overcast, not the perfect weather, but I will. So stay tuned for added photos either today in this episode or another time. And for sure, I'm going to post some on Instagram. So this is 
the top. And this is what I made out of one skein of yarn. One ball of yarn, 50 grams. It is a cot a blend of cotton and a polyacry polyacrylic. Is that nylon? I wonder. And so I used up all the yarns and in the back it's a it's laced and you tighten it to well so it fits you and we would have liked to have it a little bit longer but like I said I ran out of yarn and um, she added she wanted this added in the front so it's kind of a little bit of a better fit and it looks really cute on her so that was a success and I did not have a pattern let me come a little bit closer to you I didn't have a pattern however I when I searched crochet top on YouTube this came up and uh, these instructions and it's a young woman who shows how she makes these tops for herself and it's really not if you are familiar with crochet you won't have a problem so the way I did this one um, oh, I wish I could tell you a little bit more about the yarn but I it's something older so you would not be able to get it anyways but I'm thinking a blend of a um, a blend of uh, uh, nylon fiber man-made fiber and cotton will be really good for this so i had probably a 3.5 size crochet hook and yep worked very well so what, the way you work it, and I'm not giving away anything because she has this, I mean, anybody can look at the video. You cast on a certain amount of stitches and it depends a little bit on the cup size that you want to produce. In my case, it was a chain of 15 stitches. Then you do single crochets and then you go, you keep going around and increasing and increase stitches up here along this seam really no witchcraft yeah so one happy daughter and one happy mother <laughs> what she likes this so that's good so the other thing i have worked on you know there is a long flight obviously for us involved in coming from New Mexico to Germany so I always bring my knitting I was watching usually I do audiobooks this time I was watching movies and um, and I was working on a pair of socks even though I wanted to cast on a shawl so I had everything in my carry-on but I didn't do that and I only worked on the socks kind of decided to keep it simple and you have seen this yarn it's the beautiful yarn that I got from Marigold Jen at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. I felt like I wanted to cast on something that reminded me of the beautiful festival right away. And I have finished one sock. This is a half skein, 50 grain, uh, 50 gram uh, skein and that I split before I started knitting. I waited to make sure that I have the same amount of yarn for both socks and then I found a mini that I thought would work and um, actually I have to say I, I prefer a blue or green now but whatever it's a cute pair of socks or it will be when they're done and so thank you, um, uh, Jenny, for the beautiful yarn. Thank you again. I am very excited about these. One sock done and I am midfoot on the second. I really like how this knits up, so colorful. 
and I am keeping the project. I'm working it with my 2.5 millimeter zings and I did a cuff of 17 rounds. Again, I split my skein, my mini skein. I had a mini skein that I used that I had gotten in a swap from Amanda and um, so 17 rounds and then seven rounds before I started the heel flap. And then um, I'm a tight knitter, so I do, I did 28 rounds, 28 rows in this case, before I turn, turned the heel. And then I have the same amount of stitches for the foot that I have for the leg. That's how much I decrease here. Yes, and I keep it in a bag that I made for myself a good while ago. It's this one. It's one of the newer ones where I used cotton batting inside and I showed you these before so I'm just not I'm still in the testing stage for these because I have yet to wash one of them and I thank those of you for the feedback that I got um, uh, in regards to uh, washing uh, so I'm hopeful that they will wear well also in the long run so this is where the socks live, shorty socks. I have been also working on a new shawl, like I said. Um, so I, whenever I go on a trip, I always go a little bit crazy beforehand. I am kind of looking forward to picking nice projects for traveling and I but then I put that off sometimes too long actually a lot of times apparently too long and then I get really stressed out <laughs> because I'm not sure what I'm gonna bring and what's the right thing and I haven't casted it on and so I don't know am I really gonna enjoy that enough to to have that be my main project so it's all a little bit crazy so and this of course happened again this time before i went to germany so my mind was set on using the new uh, uh yarns that i had purchased at maryland sheep and wool festival and so for sure i wanted to take the socks but then i thought i'm not going to start a big shawl um of the new yarn purchases but i have a few shows coming up where i really would love to uh, knit up my own yarns uh to really make sure i have something nice that i can show at the the shows so i and i had made the lemmy k shawl that you have seen in the past and so i thought that's really what i want to make for myself so what did i do two days literally two days before we left on our trip to germany i started dyeing yarn and it's kind of it, it makes a good story right i mean you i hadn't even died in the new yarn studio in the garage so that was the first time that i died out there and i it was kind of special because i died for myself i i knew what i wanted what i was going for and i picked a yarn that i had not yet tried a base that I had not yet tried and I did a few um, other shades of the same color until I I really and until I ended up with the yarn the way I wanted it and um, what I am talking about is I is the the yarn for the Lemmy K shawl which is a beautiful pattern by the wonderful Isabel Kramer and like I said, you've seen this in different colors because I made it for my mom and I gifted it to her. And I mean, as you can imagine, she loved it. Who wouldn't? I mean, I would have 
loved it even though it was not really my colors this one now definitely very much my colors so moms i made out of three skeins in three different colorways one was a solid gray and um, then uh, variegated yarns mine i decided to go for a solid color and out of um, the same so the same yarn in three colorways and I like I said I've had a lot of knitting time as you can see so this is where I am and I switched to long needles last night so you can get an idea of where I am and I did what I did for mom's version I made the stockinette section larger and I you just need to count the stitches of the pattern repeat and like say she tells you to start the chart knitting from the chart knitting the pattern when you have 200 stitches and say this measures 15 stitches then you can go and extend the stockinette section and adding the the those 15 stitches add stitches in 15 stitch increments I mean I made up all these numbers so I'm not giving anything away but that's the way to go if you want to make a shawl, a shawl larger or in this case it works beautifully and I am currently on my third skein which I have started here and I believe if I'm not mistaken that I have only one more um, cable coming up where these lines here come together and then that's done and then I have the ribbed section which finishes up the shawl so I'm very excited and I love how the yarn turns out I can tell you that this is my base which is called um, Hemis after a beautiful uh, mountain area in uh, in New Mexico and where we have hot springs by the way and I it's a non superwash merino blend in a DK weight and I was hoping that it would be a great yarn for a pattern um, like this. And it does indeed give you a beautiful stitch definition. And the blue, I mean, it's just really absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, love the color. And I'm a, I always say I'm not a blue person. I gravitate towards orange and um, pink and greens, but then the right blue comes along and I I am totally in love because I think this is just nice for me also because it's the color of my eyes roughly. So that is that and it will be done soon. The other project that I brought, I haven't touched yet because now I'm really on the home stretch with this guy. And let me show you that in a second, but I almost forgot to mention my new bag. I do this to myself as well before I leave. I feel like, oh, I need a new project bag real quick. So let's make one. Let's add a little bit of stress to all the packing and stuff. But in this case, it was totally worth it. Look at that. And it even matches my project. as usual with a long handle strap and um, velvety ribbon inside and even my lining has coffee theme, has the coffee theme okay that was this and now i wanted to show you the next project that i will cast on after this which lives in this bag, which you've seen before I left. And I am planning to make 
the Bobello cardigan, which is huge. Oh goodness, I forgot. I had another option for the yarn. I was not 100% sure if I was going for this. But I don't think so because I really, 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 really love this guy. Here you see it in all its glory. It's just an oversized, almost like a shrug type of cardigan. So again, I was looking at my yarns and I was thinking, ooh, I have this one, which is one of my favorite colorways that I have added to the shop last year. I don't have anything in skein shape, but I think you can see pretty well what it is, how it looks like. Something about the light blowing it out a little. So it is called Where is Willy? And this is my a base of mine, which is called Breeze, which has a tensel content, small tensel co content. So I, because the cardigan is so big, I was a little worried about getting um, worn out by too many stitches. And I, well, I thought, whatever, I'm just going to swatch, which I did. And also I wasn't, I, you know how you, all these things go on in your head. So I was messing around with the pattern, not sure if I wanted the pattern the way it was, this ditch pattern. And um, I tried Sorry, this is hard to see. So I tried the needle size that is suggested for the cardigan, four millimeters, and that does not work for me at all. It is, the fabric I'm getting is too loosey-goosey. I don't like that. And um, so I tried it going down one size 3.5 millimeters but in this case I was thinking I'm I mean I'm so far off the gauge that is giving in, given in the pattern that again I knew I was going to need to modify the pattern so much and ending up with so many stitches that I'd get burned out and maybe end up not finishing the cardigan. So what do you do? Um, light bulb, um, I thought I will hold my fingering yarn together with a lace yarn and that way I'm gonna get the gauge for the, the, the rec with the recommended needle size and if it gets a little bigger, then that won't be a problem, but I'm going to be fine. So I had in with those, with one of the test runs that I did just when I died before I left, uh, where I got the, the yarn for the Lemmy K, this was also one of the yarns that I had dyed. I had a smaller amount. Otherwise, I might have picked this one oh, for the Lemmy K because I really like it. It's all, it's a grayish, super pale blue. This is my, um, my Willow lace yarn. It's 100% merino and I have a lot of yardage, I think around 1,200 yards. So I'm gonna hold this together with Where is Willie and hopefully I'm gonna get great gauge and I'm gonna go for the Bobello and this will be started shortly. Very excited about this one. Can't wait to, I think this is gonna be a great throw on garment for our climate. So, super nice. 
So another thing I have not been shopping yet. I, I usually I go to my favorite yarn store here, which carries Lana Grossa almost exclusively. But I haven't gotten around to get there after I hurt my foot and and all. But I did get a gift of a large amount of yarn, which was uh, all leftovers. <clears throat> from my mom's friend who is always super thoughtful and knows that I love to knit and I knit all kinds of stuff and so I have and I have kept out out of the large amount I don't want to show you everything but I wanted to show you this because I you know how sometimes you see something and you're like oh this would go together so beautifully and these are the yarns that I kept out to combine them. This may be a... It looks a little bit like a Zauber ball, even though I don't think so. It could be a Lana Grossa. Different companies make these gradient ones. But then there is this. And there is this. I think I have one more that would, oh yes, 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 yes. And this one, another fuzzy one. I love these fuzzies. I know they're not for everybody. So I love a good wool yarn, but I don't mind a novelty yarn if it's a high quality yarn like this one. And this is extremely soft, and I'm pretty sure it's a microfiber, no label. Doesn't matter. Oh, I have one more that I didn't show you. But this is a little bit thicker. I don't know if it would go, but the color is beautiful. This feels like an alpaca. So, would definitely go color-wise. So that's one of the things that I have in mind. I'm thinking a shawl or maybe even just a uh, shrug, something to throw on that sits on the shoulders, knitted in the round. That was an idea. But I don't have a pattern, but I, maybe I even make that up. Another thing that I am planning to make is a gift. And I, um, I'm not the fastest knitter of socks because I switch projects too much, but um, I was thinking I would like to make some socks as a gift for the um, for the doctor who took me in and, and took care of my foot. I've been seeing him several times already and he's always been making time, time for me, kind of, you know, without an appointment and I get to walk right in because he's a friend of my brother's. And I mean, I'm not, he's not obliged to do that for me. So I find it so, just so nice. He's a, he's a great guy. And I thought maybe he'd appreciate a pair of socks. And I have this yarn, which I have not even tried ever. And I did not know that there is a 75% cotton, 25% um, percent polyamide um, sock yarn, which I thought it might be very interesting to knit with. So, bud size 44. That's going to take me a while. I may have to mail these from America. But cute, right? And a good neutral color for... Just anybody, right? Okay. So, now you know about the future projects. I have one more thing that I want to show you. And it is something that I had ordered while I was still in America. And I had it shipped to Mons. And it's really a beautiful, beautiful book. I had seen the book on a podcast. I apologize. I can't remember which one it was. But I thought, what a nice addition to any library this will be. Even if you don't, you're not super much into, um, into Fair Isle. I thought, I need this. 
it was I decided to order it in Europe because that way it was so much cheaper incredible and it just has these beautiful patterns like a huge collection and they are not knitted they are sketched I love this but they're all because they're all in color I mean you can easily figure things out for yourself highly recommend this yep beautiful okay so I am leaving for Venice on Thursday for a little trip to Venice uh, with my husband whose birthday is coming up so that's what we planned for a special thing for his birthday so hopefully I'm gonna have some um, nice uh, pictures and maybe a little bit of video footage that I can add on to the next podcast in the meantime I hope you are all well and um, kind of not getting too hot and enjoying the summer and enjoying your knitting projects and I am looking forward to seeing you another time I apologize I will not do a lot of editing on this podcast because I'm not able to work with my um, uh, uh, computer at home where I usually do this so I'm not so sure how this is going to work out with my with the iPad hopefully it's not going to be too bad with the with the editing and um, so um, what else I feel like I'm forgetting to say something but um, yeah it is what it is I mean I'm trying to put this together, maybe have a little bit of um, footage also for you um, in mom's garden because it's so beautiful out there, so green and lush. Okay, again, my goodbyes. Um, and uh, I am looking forward to seeing you uh, next time. And until then, I hope you are making something beautiful.